Welcome to the Monday, September the 18th, 2023 meeting of the Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Liz Pritchett, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Steve Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Eric, you're going to need to uh, unmute yourself so you can introduce yourself, even if you don't turn on your video. Oh, I hope we didn't lose Eric. I know his internet was problematic. Eric, member. Okay. Did that happen? We heard you, Eric. Good. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen for anybody who has not gone through this yet. Um, the stuff on the screen is mostly for um, people who are watching via Orca Media, but there's some other information for everybody. Um, so for those viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. So if you want to uh, use the video options on your device, you can type this into your web browser um, and it should bring you right into the Zoom platform. And then once I let you into the meeting, you can see everything on your screen and we can see you and um, you can talk. Alternatively, you can dial in on your phone and plug in this meeting ID when prompted. Um, and then when you log into the meeting, you'll be able to talk to us. You just won't be able to um, see everything that we're looking at on our screens. If you have any problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, and if you're phoning in, star six is mute on your phone, mute, mute and unmute. Um, please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. If you have questions or comments about an item on the agenda, um, please raise your hand. Um, you can do that physically if you're on video or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar um, and then wait for the chair to call on you. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. If committee members have looked at the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Liz. Liz. Ben. And Steve. So the agenda is approved. We can move forward to the first applicant for 41 College Street, owner the Vermont College of Fine Arts, applicant the New School of Montpelier. Is someone there to describe your application? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll start off. Uh, my name is Jeff Oleski with Catamount Consulting Engineers. Uh, I'm the Civil Engineer Project. Uh, also in attendance today, uh, we have um, the applicant uh, representing the new school of Montpelier is Elias Gardner. Uh, we also have, I believe, uh, Katie Gustafson uh, representing the, which is the Vermont College of Fine Arts. And then also in attendance in support of the application is Mark Montanami with uh, Black River Design, the architect for the project. Um, unless Mark or Elias prefer, I'm happy to just give a brief overview of the project and then maybe hand it over to Mark for to maybe the aesthetics and design of the building and the building addition that we're looking to do here. Um, my only question, Meredith, is if you have the ability to screen, share the application plans and or architectural uh, 
if you prefer us to do that uh, as part of the presentation. Um, I think probably the easiest thing to do if, if you're available to be would just pull up uh, currently um, the proposed uh, condition site plan, which is C 2.0 of the application. Um, that just helped me give a brief overview of where the project is, is located and, and what we're looking to do here. And then um, following that, it, it may make sense to pull up the, uh, the proposed renderings and, and um, elevations that we share so he can give an overview of, of the building and building aesthetic. Um, Okay. Go. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, so for those being able to view this screen, uh, you're looking at a, a bird's eye view of the kind of project area. Um, this isn't all inclusive, but um, what you see here is kind of uh, the two buildings associated with the project. Um, both uh, is the Alumni Hall, 45 College Street with Circling, and then 41 College Street, which is the Bishop Hatch Hall. Um, both buildings previously associated with Vermont College of Fine Arts, um, but both buildings that the new school of Montpelier has been leased with space out of. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long. Uh, Elias could answer that maybe later, but they've been some are all portions of these building things for uh, to supplement there the new school of montpelier um and if you look at the site you can see college street on the left the green is further left of that um and in between these two existing buildings right now is really just a sidewalk some stairs patio area um and there's two face door uh, uh, access points to either two and uh, in support of, of um, ultimately the new school of Montpelier taking over more of this space and utilizing it more efficiently, they would like to ultimately connect these two buildings with a building addition, which is kind of the dark shaded box you see right there that Meredith is circling. Um, and then with that um, building addition, which would connect it to both buildings, there would be an elevator, an elevator shaft um, that would allow for um, AD access of both buildings. This is really an attempt to create um, access, uh, an ADA access to, to all floors of both buildings is the ultimate goal of this project. Um, there obviously will be some sidewalk improvement with the project. So we'll ultimately have, have a uh, reconstructed sidewalk coming from College Street, which is kind of the, the gray strip D Meredith's highlighting there, come in um, to the new connector on the first floor or the second level of the connector as you see it. And then there would be a sidewalk of the addition that would go to the back park that would be separate levels. So separate levels um, and this kind of existing grades kind of operate now. There's kind of where the connector is, there's a series of stairs, pretty good grade change between there now. Um, there'd be some minor drainage improvements, um, some landscaping improvement, um, not much as far as letting us concerned turned and changes the there's an existing um pull out the lights there now and, and we're just kind of repurposing uh our utilize what's are there uh, as far as this addition uh, we have some drainage improvements you can see kind of a lighter shaded area in the back parking lot um what that is is that light is existing pavement that would be dripped up allow for some drainage improvements underground um electrical improvements um and then and then repaved and, and so the parking and parking area function exactly as now um the only other major thing i want to point is out now is there is an overhead um power line that actually went right through this corridor uh that was not power uh, a week or two ago and came up with a solution that would essentially involve putting a new um power pole on the east or right side of college street uh, kind of near the right away, just about the up right there, Meredith, and then uh, picking up the overhead line there, and then from there it would all bound to the back of the of the uh, lot where, because currently that's overhead how it runs right now. So um, I think we've got a game plan there, and then really the only other uh, site improvement associated with this project is the Bishop Hatch Hall kind of improvement project. There is an existing uh, lawn landscape area on the back of the lawn, which is pretty much just grass. The parking lot area, and the new ultimately fence that in 
um, with an L-shaped fence that pretty much runs, they're showing it right now, um, along uh, the, for, to kind of connect the L-shaped building um, and uh, create a, a outdoor space for some of the students there, but to be something the students can out. And then there'd be some ADA ramp and uh, uh, sidewalk improvements, uh, that shaded area that, that Meredith's highlighting to just uh, facilitate ADA access existing back door of the building. Um, I think that's just a general overview of the site improvements. I guess uh, I'll open it up to boards of questions with any site questions first. And if there are none, I'll then hand it over to Mark uh, to review the building design. Are there any questions on the site components? I don't have any, this is Eric. I don't either. It's Liz. I have no questions either. Seems fairly straightforward. Just a, a real quick question. Are there plans eventually to connect uh, Bishop Hall and Noble? Bishop and Noble? Was that the question? Yes. Uh, Elias may better answer that question. As I understand it, the only two buildings that the new school Montpelier um, will be ultimately owning or, or operating in the future are the alumni hall and, and Bishop Hatch. There is a uh, canopy connector between those two buildings, which are the two dash lines you see now um, yes. covering a sidewalk that connect those two buildings. But this, to my knowledge, there's no future connection proposed there that I'm aware of or anything like that. Yeah, that's correct. We haven't had any conversations about connecting Bishop and Noble. Which, which buildings will the new school be incorporating? Bishop and alumni, the 41 and 45 college, so the ones on Just, either side of this connector. Right. Well, how many buildings will the new school own for your project eventually? Uh, we'll own these two we're purchasing. We currently own um, a building across the green on... Um, 11 West Street on the corner. Okay. You have more uh, more students there now? Or is it a, an enrollment expanding? Um, yeah, acquiring more space is sort of one of our barriers to expanding enrollment. So that's that's the hope with this project is it gives us space. Thank you. One thing I, I do want to be clear um, is that as part of this project anyways, uh, the connector is not proposing any additional office or classroom space. It is strictly a, a hallway and corridor to connect these two buildings and accommodate the elevator shaft. So there's you know nothing anticipated expansion wise specifically related to this uh, application, I guess. I'll What, what will the alumni hall be used for in your plans? So currently we have one of our programs in the basement and we'll continue to have student programming in the basement. And we'd like to continue using the gym for our students at times. And we've talked with the college about continuing to have it available as a, a rental for other activities. Oh, okay. I was just curious. Thank yeah, you. Totally. Is there any exterior lighting proposed? So for, uh, for the walkways yeah. accessing the the addition? Yeah, so not, nothing new proposed. What there is now on the on the sidewalk, essentially from the College Street towards where the connector is going to be, there are two existing pole mounted gooseneck down casting light fixtures over that sidewalk okay. uh, one we're one we're proposing to maintain where it currently is the second one we're proposing to just relocate to the other side to the east side of the connector and put that on the other sidewalk so the sidewalk has a um 
uh, external lighting fixture, so to speak, for security purposes on that sidewalk. Um, but there's no change in light fixtures or amount or anything like that. Uh, we just repurposing that that exists in that downcasting light fixture. Okay. Same thing in the rear, no additional lighting proposed. Yeah, no additional rear pole or building up the lighting uh, is, is proposed in conjunction with the option. Okay. Any committee members have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? Are we going to see any uh, architectural renderings of what that that walkway looks like? Yeah, I, I guess that would be a good time to maybe hand it over to Mark. And it uh, looks like Meredith is pulling up the uh, proposed renderings now. I'll, I'll kick it to Mark and let him pick it up. From Regular duck season starts. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening, everyone. The bottom picture is the uh, view from College Street. And that sidewalk that you're seeing coming in from the left side actually exists to the bottom of the handicap ramp that goes up to the front door of Alumni Hall. So we're proposing to extend that ramp to the new front door of the connector. And the connector itself, we're proposing uh, Pretty simple materials, uh, glass and aluminum, and a little bit of, of uh, siding on the left-hand edge where it abuts Alumni Hall. Uh, this pallet of materials is actually the same pallet of materials we used for the elevator addition on the backside of Schumeyer Hall uh, in 2016. And we've also located the elevator towards the back of the connector. So as you look at it and you can see it on the right-hand side, it's up against Bishop Hatch Hall, but it's pushed towards the back. So that mass actually won't be at the front of the connector. It'll be pushed towards the rear. You will be able to see it through the connector. Uh, but again, the, the pallet of materials we're looking at for the uh, elevator tower would be wood painted siding, similar to, again to what we did at Schulmeyer Hall. So we're, we're trying to be respectful of what we've already done on the campus and, and uh, tie it in a little bit. But the goal ultimately is to use a simple pallet of materials. That way we're not taking away from the alumni hall history uh, as well as the Bishop Hatch uh, architecture. And the intent would be that on either side, as you look in Question the glass, you'll have see to be as tall I'm what I'm. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I did, yeah. I think uh, Eric may be having a connection issue. I think he might have said, does it have to be that tall? Yeah, I think he accidentally remuted himself. And yeah, I think he was talking about the, um, and maybe even just the elevator tower being taller than the rest of it may have been his question. Yeah, so the height of the connector. My, my internet went out. I didn't, uh, uh, you know, it's the intersection with the roof on, uh, on Alumni Hall. Does that glass have to be that tall? Yeah, so if, Meredith, is it possible for you to zoom in on that a little bit? Yep. That lower image, thank you. So the height of that connector is, is driven primarily from the Bishop Hatch floor, floor to floor levels and providing accessibility to the, the three upper levels. And you can see on the inside, the right hand side of that connector, there are three dark platforms. Those are the landings for each of the floors. And so the roof level of the connector is, is as low as we can make it, including some steel structure for roof support and we've run it straight across over to alumni. Uh, the elevator tower itself has to have an overrun on it. The overrun has to be about 13 feet above the topmost floor. So that's why the height of the elevator tower is uh, where it is right there. We did look at alternatives for that roof, uh, sloping the roof from right to left. So it's higher on, the bishop side and lower on the alumni side uh, was considered. It seemed like it was a bit too modern of a take uh, for 
both of these buildings. Uh, we actually looked at potentially jogging the roof structure, uh, stepping it down structurally. That's a more expensive solution and it basically requires two roof drains <clears throat> instead of one. So, and again, for simplicity's sake, we we're trying to keep the the massing and the overall form of the of the connector as simple as possible. So that's how we wound up with that roof height. Um, it seems to me the build the buildings are brick, right? So yes, would you be painting the wood then a, a brick red or a dark you know dark brick red? No, we'd probably be painting it white. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking if you painted them red, then it would blend in a little more with the you know alumni hall in particular particular yeah, we, we found when we've tried to match brick colors and, and paint them it doesn't always work and they because they fade over time and i think one of the things is you know this this campus has an act 250 permit on it so we know there's other permits we need to uh attain to get this approved and and one of those is going to involve uh historic preservation so we're trying to use past experience with historic preservation and put forth a design we think that they will approve, but also one that we think aesthetically uh, preserves the, the history of both buildings and also plays off some of the previous work we've done on campus at, at Schulmeyer and the the, uh, the new dorm down next to Glover. Okay. Or All right. Well, library. I, I don't think the brick, would, you know, the paint would have to match exactly, but I just think it would be less noticeable if it were dark rather than white. That's my opinion. Yep. As a preservationist. <laughs> we could give in the in the approval, we could give the option to use a darker color if that were so chosen as an option as the project proceeded. I, I, I agree with Liz, this Eric. I agree with Liz that a black would uh, make that whole structure disappear more. Uh, to to get a, a quick answer to, to my question about the roof lines, it could be built with the roof line coming in uh, below the eaves of Alumni Hall. Uh, you would have to slope the roof structure down to do that. Could you step it down? Uh, we could, but that's a more expensive option because we're stepping this, the structural steel to do that. But it could be done. It could, yep. What color and material is the roof on Alumni Hall now? It's an asphalt shingle roof that's, I believe, uh, being replaced soon to in kind to match what's there now or a newer version of what's there now, which is pretty well deteriorated. What color is the roof and what will it, what color will it be when it's replaced? Uh, I, I believe it was some type of black or charcoal gray asphalt shingle. And the intent is to, to match it with a newer version of that same material. We could give an option to paint that connector on the left, the connector to Alumni Hall, give an option to paint that either a a black or a charcoal color, which would make it disappear with the roof with the existing roof material. And again, we can give that as an option. Um, I'm going to just share my screen of a very, very recent like July recent uh, Google image so that you can see the roof. So it is charcoal gray, but then they've got, there's some sort of. Um, yeah, it has a snow belt on it. Yeah, a snow belt that's much lighter, it yeah. looks like, at least when the sun's reflecting off of it. And that's slated to be replaced uh, with new metal to match the existing. And I think at this point, there's some question as to what that metal actually is. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think it's copper. So the intent okay. would be to, to replace it with new to match. Okay, so just so that the committee members are, have all the information when you're talking about what color options for that. Are you saying the snow belt is gonna be 
uh, replaced with copper? If that's what the existing material is, yes. I mean, it would be nice to do that whole siding in a sort of standing seam copper also to the... Um, but my next question, my real question was, what is the dividers of the... Um, of of all those windows is that an like an extruded aluminum that's painted white or is that that was the intent that it would be uh, extruded aluminum curtain wall with a white painted finish which is also what we did at the the schulmeyer elevator yeah and then the um narrower bands of glass are sort of representing floor elevations uh, yes yep What color is the aluminum frame that's holding the structural part that holds the glass? That would be a painted white aluminum. Is the white more historically accurate than say a black or a dark color, which would make it disappear? I think the black would, would disappear more than white. It, I, I would agree it would definitely disappear more than the white. Um, yeah, I will note, looking back at the Google Earth and Meredith showed, is that the, you know, the trim around the window of both of these buildings, I think, is a white or off-white currently, yep. um, if, if I, unless I saw that mistakenly, as, as well as the stub belt on the roof. So I, don't, I almost feel like, as far as tying in the character aesthetic, uh, some type of white may be more contiguous than, than going black or charcoal or something like that, but that's my two cents. Yeah, that was the intent. Uh, I Personally, I wouldn't have any issues if a darker color was the choice, but I think... dark Darker color would make the whole structure disappear more. I mean, you would still see the glass and you would st see the the black outlines, but the, the darker color would make it less noticeable. Particularly when you look at the the representation showing the color of both buildings. I mean, both buildings are sort of a dark brick color in the, in the photos that you have. And I almost think that the black would look better against the dark buildings as opposed to the a white would make it stand out more and, and be more noticeable in and of itself, as opposed to sort of becoming secondary to the main buildings. I uh, agree with you, Steve, completely. Uh, the black would uh, look good. I think the wall that's up against uh, Alumni Hall uh, I think it'd be fun to do some imaging to see if that's black, that, was painted black would disappear. Not disappear, but be far less visible. Because the illustration, the the illustration rather than the photos show both buildings as a as almost a white color. But in fact both buildings are are brick and it looks much different in the photograph as opposed to the representation. Yeah, I apologize. We didn't have time to get the, the buildings rendered with the brick color. I think it's for personally for me, it's a question of whether you want to try and hide the connector or make it a, a piece of its own time and, and not try and hide it. And I think this leans towards the latter of those two options, but I think the the other way of going with darker colors is also an acceptable approach. Well, you're never going to hide it anyway, but it right. makes it far less uh, visible. Uh, you'll still be able to see it just fine if somebody's looking for it, but uh, you can glance at the building to make it, dis uh, it as little visible, <clears throat> I think, is a, is a good goal here. Remind me again what your proposal for material was on the uh, uh, for the opaque side connecting to the gym. Uh, it painted wood wood siding, or I think what we used at uh, the Schulmeyer elevator was a composite uh, 
fly ash siding that had a longer lifespan than wood. So that would be the, the proposal here. You definitely got me excited with the idea of copper snow belts and making that copper, I think, would be pretty remarkable. And seems like darker color, I think, yeah. you know, maybe color uh, on the uh, uh, not matching, but close to what the shingles are in Alumni Hall would make that whole connection that I asked about before uh, disappear into the roof, contrasting with it. Yes, I agree, Aaron. So just a quick question. Would committee members like me to pull up a Google Earth of the um, Schulmeyer elevator tower that um, has been referenced a few times just so you can see that? I can pull a back view of it from the um, parking lot. Yes, thank you. Sure, thank you. You can't really see it from the Ridge Street side, but this is the view from, um, oh, I don't know what street I'm on right now, uh, College Street. Yeah. Um, so this is the view from the back of what ended up getting built for this elevator connector. So it looks like this is a lighter color. They did a required a darker paneling here to try and blend into the roof. And then there's the little entrance. Um, but you can't really see this from the front um, of the building. Nope. And the, the painted white siding was a response to the gable ends of both those buildings, which have uh, horizontal siding in them, yeah. which the front of alumni also has. That it's on the back of the building makes a difference too. Um, you know, additions on the back are generally considered not as um, important to the overall character of the building uh, as the front that's, you know, what you see from the street. So I think there's probably more leniency when you have a structure attached to the rear like this. I just think that the the whole the whole addition with the the framework for the glass as well as the 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 framing that's going to connect to the buildings, I think in a darker color would be pre preserve the the color and character of the main buildings without sort of popping out and being noticed in and of itself. I think we should, I think that the, the, again, the character of the building should be what you see from the street. And the, this addition is certainly enhancing the use of the buildings, but I think it should, it should not stand out in and of itself. I would recommend either a, a, a black or a charcoal color for the framing something that would blend in with the brick, whether it, again, whether it's a black or a dark bronze or a charcoal color that would blend in better with the brick. And it would still, I mean, you would still see the, the white trim on the brick buildings, but again, this would not be all white standing out by itself. What are the other committee members thinking? Well, I, I agree. I mean, yes, I, I like so Steve, but could you repeat that? I, my internet keeps going on and off. Sorry, I was. I would just think that either a black charcoal or a dark bronze color, whichever is more available, would be a better choice for the addition and it would blend with the buildings more and the buildings would still be the predominant 
would still be predominant when viewed from College Street. And you would still notice this addition, but it would blend in and it wouldn't pop out on its own painted white. And I know that the trim on the buildings is white, but it's it's a minor part of the building as opposed to the entire structure being white. I agree, um, Steve. I think I do want to say that I think the structure itself is attractive. Um, I like the um, transparency of the glass and the, you know, the, the metal structure. The grid is delicate, and you know, I think it's handsome, and I think it it, it isn't a bad looking structure at all. It's not that we're trying to hide it, really. I mean, we're not trying to pretend it's not there. We're just trying to minimize the impact visually. Steve, can I just pipe in with a procedural comment? Okay. Um, so this project is going to the development review board at their next meeting. Um, on okay. October 2nd. Um, so this isn't a situation where the committee's comments come to me and I just sort of pass them forward if it's a recommendation. Um, the Development Review Board will actually be the one to make the ultimate call as to whether or not your recommendations get put in as conditions on the permit. Yes. Um, so <laughs> if you do come out tonight with a recommendation, feel free to also sort of rank options because the board has more ability to make adjustments than I do. Um, so you could theoretically give options to the board with like your first, you know, first, second, third choices, things like that, so that the board can think about how it wants to condition things, um, especially because if this is having to go to Act 250, whether or not, um, you know, they, they want to do something so it doesn't hold up an Act 250 approval yeah. or doesn't have to come back through the city again if the Act 250 chooses something that isn't necessarily the DRC's first choice. Just throwing okay. that out there. Um, and the, like I said, also the DRB won't be looking at this until October 2nd. So okay. if you do decide you're like, mm, we kind of want to see some options, you can see this again on October 2nd and it will not hold up the DRB decision or the permit for this at all. Okay. Unless any other committee members have any other suggestions, I would just suggest that we give them the option to use a darker color, either a black charcoal or a dark bronze color, whatever they think would fit in with the design of the project as opposed to the white. And again, it's so that it blends in with the existing buildings without standing out in and of itself. It should blend in rather than stand out as a structure in its own right. It certainly will be noticeable, but it'll certainly soften the effect. Any other committee members think of anything, any other options differently? I think you're good to go on. Oh, there's Eric. Yep. Uh, I assume we're talking, I've been going in, and my internet's going in and out, so I apologize for that, but I assume we're talking about recommending uh, darker colors for the... Uh, Frame framework. I like the overall design. Yes, That's, no, the design looks great. And uh, is, I think darker colors would work better and stuff. Uh, and blending in with the roof, uh, uh, the charcoal gray or black would be would look a lot better. I'd, okay, I'd, we'll do, we'll recommend either the the black or charcoal color again, which blends in with the new roof color as well as being compatible with the brick.
unless anybody has anything else to add, I can go through the criteria. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible uh, with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures. Uh, I'll skip through that since this is not a non-historic. This is an historic building. Uh, with the recommendations, we, that's ex certainly acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible. There is no proposed land. Is there any landscaping proposed with this project? Yes, there is a couple minor things. Um, uh, really what it boils down to is the both of the sidewalks coming in from either side of the connector, um, the south side of the west sidewalk, and then the north side of the east sidewalk have a row of like reed feather grass, um, just a, a visual break um, and, and to tie in the, the lawn areas to both of those sidewalks. And then in the, on the east side of the connector, on the south of the sidewalk, uh, we're proposing um, a couple um, garden beds, raised garden beds, um, okay. those three rectangles you see there, just to be used um, by the new school of Montpelier uh, just for education purposes and use. Um, so and you can see that you can see the, the row, those darker circles are the uh, feathered grass that I was just describing just to break up the sidewalk and, and surrounding areas. Okay, that's fine, that's acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Height of building addition shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings, acceptable. Proportion. Compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area, Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural defining character defining features and shall run adjacent to building cornices or corners when possible, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings, projects within the design review district and subject to landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. And does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings? And then mechanical equipment screening, acceptable. And again, the recommendation is that the metal framework for the addition, as well as the side panels, be in a darker color, preferably a black or charcoal 
to match the roof, the dark color to blend in with the brick colors of both buildings. Uh, and again, those are recommendations from the committee. All in favor, speak your names. Eric on the intermittent net. <laughs> ben. Liz, are you there? Sorry, I thought you heard me. Liz. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Thank you. And Steve says yes. So, or in favor. Awesome. Um, so just so everybody's aware, um, who's on for the application tonight, the, so I'll get a copy of the recommendation form from Steve. It'll go into the packet that is distributed to the development review board for the October 2nd meeting. Um, feel free to send me comments, thoughts between now and, um, I'd say by next Wednesday, if you wanted to put any, you know, follow up to the committee's recommendations um, so that I can fold it all into the packet. Um, anything anything we get by next Wednesday, I can ensure we'll get in the packets and delivered to the board ahead of the meeting. Um, stuff that comes in later than that sometimes has to just get emailed to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All of, all of you representing the applicant. Uh, Good luck with your project and thank you for listening to our <laughs> our recommendations. Yeah, thank you everybody for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks again and good luck with your project. Thank you. Have a nice night. Okay. Good evening. <laughs>
I think Liz is saying yes, she's just muted. So yes, yes please. Okay, so this is what the north side of the house currently looks like. And um, this is the location of where the utilities used to come in. We are replacing the four boilers that used to be in the in the basement with a single boiler that will service the heat and hot water for the whole house now. And so this is what it looks like now. And this is my little picture of what I think it might look like in the future. Um, so you can see that the door is replacing right where the window is. Um, we'll put a little motion activated light above it. The platform will be about 36 inches um, from the door to this outside. I didn't, I should have put another thing down here. Obviously, we're going to lose one of these parking spaces. Uh, there's already a ramp on this side, and we'll put stairs um, on this side. And the reason it was designed in this way is because if we had a smaller platform with stairs descending from right in front of the door, we were worried about snow collecting in that space between the stairs and this, the, the, the handicapped ramp. So this way we can clear the stairs into the, into the, what will be uh, just parking space. It won't be a parking space. It will be just right next to the parking area. And just for reference, um, those are my little drawings. <laughs> uh, and then um, this is the south side of the building. And I'm showing you this because it, this six panel door is currently installed. It's, it's the door to the basement. And that's the same door that we're planning to put in on the, the north side. Quick question. Yeah. During the flood, how much water did you get in the basement of the building? Uh, the, the basement was full. We had water. Um, we had here, I'll show you. Uh, the, I don't know if you can see it here. Um, no, yeah, just right there. That's the high water mark on the building right there where my cursor is. So it was completely flooded on the first floor. So yeah, as far as how much we got in the basement, we got all of it. <laughs> the, the, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, I, I know that some of you um, here are very familiar. Liz used to be one of the people that occupied the front house of this, um, this property. And the right. river is just to the right of where this picture was taken. Right. To, to the left, it's right behind the house. Now, looking at the picture where the 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 doors Can you give going. Us a street. I think he's asking for a street view. This house is not uh, on the street. It's actually one fifty five Elm Street. That's on the street. This is a carriage, a former carriage house, I think. Um, that's behind. The, the house on the road. And I don't know if you've seen Google Earth recently, but they took it in July. So we've got a nice trash pile in front of the house um, in the current <laughs> Google Earth. Um, I don't have, maybe, are you able to pull that up, Merida? Give me just a second, because everything rearranged again. Let's see. Is that right? Yep. Yep. So this is 155, and the building we're talking about is 153 back here. Yes. Um, so yeah, just zoom down. Um, so right here's where um, Spring Street comes out. So the river is right behind that. And so the place you're talking about is over here, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not really going to be able to see that from anywhere, I don't think. No. 
now it is not visible on the screen. Looking back at the platform, can you pull that picture up again, Meredith? Uh, I can pull up a slightly different one. I don't think I have the one that, there you go. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Look, look, now you're replacing the boilers with one boiler. That's right. Had you thought of taking that platform and extending it, bringing the roof line over and putting a small addition in the corner there, which would hold your boiler above flood zone? Well, instead of creating uh, an additional floor space, interior floor space, we we stole a little interior floor space from the existing footprint in order to create a mechanicals room inside. That was just look. Problem. Just looking at what alternatives you might have is would. Would the flood hazard zoning require you to move it up if you're replacing it? I, that's what I've been told. Yes, sir. Yes, we have a we have a certain um, yeah. There's a what is it? A DFE, which means something flood elevation. D the D stands for determined. I can't remember. Design. What is it? Design. Design. It's the design flood elevation. So the flood elevation, you have to design new construction to or um, replacement um, utilities have to be placed at or above. Right. So even inside the building, we have a certain height above which we need to install the uh, utilities. In fact, if I can just show you... Uh, this picture here, um, this is a brand new solar uh, thingy. Sorry, I don't know the official terms, <laughs> but this is, we have solar panels on the roof. And these were just replaced. And this is obviously the, the electrical panel for the entire building. But because the DFE is somewhere around this line, we are right. needing to move all of these up to this area up here and that i'm sure i will be coming through again at some point next year to talk to you people again to figure out the design for the platform that will be needed at that time to service it all of these um, utilities that will be installed up high on this side of the house and what, what about your boiler, if you're required to locate, if you're replacing it and you're required to locate that above flood level, where do you propose to put it? It's already been installed, actually, Steve. It's inside the new utility room, which is- Oh, okay. The side of oh, the okay. Store. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was gonna be inside that room. Yeah, yeah, it's inside the door. Like I- Does it have- we designated some new floor space interior. We stole some room from the, we were renovating the unit anyway. So we just made it slightly smaller in order to accommodate the new mechanics room. Uh, does the boiler have to be elevated from the floor up above the floodplain level, flood level? <clears throat> it's a wall mounted unit, so it works out okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is that oil or gas? It's gas. Oh, great. Yes, those are nice. You can mount those up on a wall wherever, as, as high as you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, yes. Oh, good. So the, the new uh, utilities that'll be in that room include the new boiler, um, and a new electrical panel that will also be moved from the basement to this first floor location. Good, nice plan. Oh, thank you. We, we love making plans like this after <laughs> floods. 
well, you avoid that expense, possible expense later on. Exactly. Any other committee members have any suggestions, comments, or questions? No, I like you, Steve. I enjoy the plan. Yes, I like it too. Okay. Works for me. Good. Works. I can read through the criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. And the, the application, the proposal is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Proportion. Compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building, acceptable. <laughs> Outdoor lighting fixtures. Were there any, is there any lighting proposed outside of the door? Yes, we're adding a motion detector flood above the door. Okay. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Liz. Ben. 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 And Steve says yes as well. So it passes for all in favor. Meredith, do you want to describe the next step? Yeah. Um, so, Laura, hi. Oh, Laura just went away. I'll email her. <laughs> okay. Um, so, for the next application, I got an email that um, the window representative can't make it, um, nor can the property owner. The re window representative was going to come. This is another one of Lucky's properties. Um, and so, it was going to be the same gentleman who was here before from RK Miles. Um, if you take a look in the application, they're proposing to use the same windows that they did in the um, Langdon Street building. Um, but for this property um, on State Street, the, the difference is that the existing windows actually are curved on top. Um, and so my thought is that you guys probably are going to want to actually talk to somebody about how they're dealing with that inconsistency of replacing a curved topped window with a rect pure rectangular window. Um, but that's, do you want me to have them come back on the second? That probably would be good to see what they're, what they're planning. Yeah, I mean, there's there was some information in there that looked like maybe they were proposing do a doing like a wooden insert on the top because they at the very end of the packet it looked like there was a example maybe from the back of the building. Oh, Laura's coming back on um, from the back of the building maybe where there's that wooden insert or maybe from it's a different nearby building. I'm not quite sure, um, 
but I'll I'll let them know that we need one of them to come back on the second. Um, that this will just get bumped to then. Sorry, I just uh, I, I I thought I was done, and then I heard you say Laura as I was exiting. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> Laura. So no, nope, it's okay. Um, so once I've got the recommendation form that Steve filled out, um, I'll just coordinate with Audra and and Michelle because this is the design review project part, and it's it's a bigger bigger aspect, but I think that Michelle had already okayed the other building permit aspects. Um, so I, I think that we'll be able to get this out fairly quickly. I just need to talk to Michelle. Okay. That way we can get you the zoning and the building permits at the same time. So it should be a, maybe a day or two. Do you want us to email you when they're ready so you can just come pick them up versus mailing? Perfect. Yeah, I'll come pick them okay. up. Okay. Awesome, but wait for the email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Laura. All right. Can I go now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can go now. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. I'm going to sign off because of consolidated communications failure to find the internet. All right, Eric. Okay, so I'm assuming we're tabling uh, Lucky's application till the next meeting. Getting nods from Ben and Liz. I don't. I don't. I mean, they're not here. I don't think we really have to do a motion for that. Okay. Um, I will that's... let them know. Okay. Good. And if if you could not only let them know, but if they could, whatever they're proposing, Marvin does make the curved windows. So it would be nice to know what the price difference is for the curved window because Marvin does make them. I'll let them know. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes from the September 5th meeting? Oop, you're the only one now in attendance who was there, Steve. Well, I guess we will put the, put the minutes off till the next meeting. All righty. And I guess with a vote of one, I motion, make a motion and second and vote to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what Eric does in HPC and just declare adjournment, I guess, for tonight. Okay, well, I, can, I can second and or vote to adjourn. <laughs> okay, well, we have two of us. Well, then Liz is still here. Liz is here. It was just we lost Eric. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. I second I'll second that. it. Okay. <laughs> Speak your names to adjourn the meeting. Liz. Yes. Steve, meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>